How did we already get to the last episode of Mob Psycho? Sad. I'm already getting emotional. Uh-oh. Yeah, I was right. Right this way. And it's it's gonna confess to you, maybe. Look at this girl, she really is a keeper. She like waited for Mob despite the raging storm. Oh, she felt it. She's got a little bit of a psychic in her too now. Nah, I'll wait. His voice did sound kind of shaky over the phone. Whoa! Oh my god. <laughs> this is gonna hurt extra bad when Mob gets rejected. We can't go any further! I'm sorry, Reagan, but we've already come so far! I can feel my energy being stolen away from me at an alarming rate! Reagan's going. Up, I'm not gonna be able to protect you anymore. Maybe not being a psychic will work to his advantage. I'll be fine on my own from here. <laughs> There's no way you'll be fine. He'll be fine. Get your boy. Oh, last time I seen this opening. Damn it. But there's no better conclusion, I think. Or there's no better way for this to go down in the final episode with Reagan going after Mob. I mean, really, there's a lot of characters at the show. A lot of great characters. <laughs> I'm still thinking about the Hanazawa episode. I'm still kind of blown away by it. I wish I could react to that episode twice. But at its core for me, this is the journey of Mob and, and Reagan. I'm remembering the moment, I think it was in season one, where Reagan was telling Mob it's okay to run away. While Reagan not running away from this one. There's no way I can meet up with Subomi now. <laughs> I can't allow her to see me like this. Uh, yeah. It totally backwards, you know? This form is what Subomi absolutely has to see. Because oh, no, no. that's the only way to find out if she can still accept me. That's clearly Dark Mob talking. It's kind of the perfect thing for it to say, actually. I think a lot of Mob's dilemma as a person is finding his own value. One of his best gifts, one of the things that makes him so fascinating, is the thing you've seen come up in conversations with Hanazawa and Reagan, where, you know, the powers don't make you. But there's that temptation to lean into that, to get a false friend of identity, where, oh, I'm special because I have this this thing. No more work is required for me. There's no more soul searching. I don't need to find values. I don't need to become a strong person. This thing that I have is conveniently the definition of what makes a person special. And look how much of it I have. Like, I'm literally the best. It's very well thought out that Tsubomi has been shown repeatedly to not give a crap about Mob's powers. That's not what she's looking for, and I think that's that's correct, actually. What she wants, and what Mob wants, whether as a result of his own soul-searching, or maybe just simply a result of Tsubomi's rejection of his powers, or a combination of both, is something much harder to define and much harder to find. It's something that has to be cultivated, and it's probably the journey of a lifetime. After Tsubomi stopped showing interest in my powers, you decided not to use them anymore. That there it is. was a terrible mistake. But when you love someone, you're supposed to be willing to change for them, right? This is really interesting. He's literally hashing it out with himself. She didn't treat me any differently due to my psychic powers. She was a good friend. She showed me as much kindness as she did you. She accepted us. Right. But the powers were neither here nor there for her. I think she liked Mob because she saw past that. That she saw past the superficial superficiality of his powers and saw him as the, the sweet person that I fall in, in love with. Her not caring about his powers is the other side of that coin. It's so great watching Mob debate with himself. Mob's dark side is not wrong. In fact, the reason it exists and has grown powerful is because Mob can't discard it completely. There's something of value there for him. They say, and I, I believe to some extent, once you've gotten the necessary lessons from things that go wrong or things that are, are terrifying or whatever, they fade. Maybe that's even the, the function of those things, you know, the function of regret or embarrassment, memories that haunt you is a reminder and it's a reminder to keep you safe. I think it gets to a toxic point when their negative aspects are fed to too large of an extent, misinterpreted, getting the wrong lesson out of it, or just repressed and ignored. And that's what I would guess is happening with Mob's shadow side. I think the answer is a combination of both of their outlooks. Like, I, I think it's right, 100% right. It feels beautiful to me, the insight that you are not your powers, right? You're not the things that you were born with or your aptitude necessarily. You're not any one thing, but at the same time, you want to accept those things. You want to accept what you are and know Know, know what you are. There are just so many conflicting messages about self-value, and perhaps part of the issue is that it's a multifaceted process. Because I, I don't believe, or I kind of reject the idea that you have to love yourself exactly the way you are, that you're perfect as is. I think part of building your spirit means adventure through oneself, becoming conscious enough to craft yourself into things that you want to be and avoiding things you don't want to be, doing something akin to nature and synthesizing different things to be creative, for lack of a better word, you know, to be additive, forming something new out of your raw parts that is, is greater than the sum of the parts, which would represent something like, you know, a maximum self. Yet at the same time, I think you have to be on your own team. You're all you got. And you're almost always going to go astray, denying the realities of what you are. You didn't fall in love with Tsubomi. I did. Yeah, but they're one and the same. It's just a buried part. And also, this is Mob, in a weird way, trying to love himself. It's not Tsubomi that he's feeling. It's himself reflected through Tsubomi's eyes. Because Tsubomi being an outsider, who he's assigned high value to, gives him permission to love himself in a way that he wants to love himself but feels unable to. It's a personal journey, which is why Tsubomi is unnecessary. She's just been a placeholder this whole time. There you are! Mom, and Reagan shows up. Mom, it's me! Can you hear me? Listen to him. 
He doesn't treat me any differently because of my powers either. Right. Listen, you don't have to pretend anymore. You know that man's a liar. Oh, this <laughs> is truly... Well, I mean, he's a liar, but doesn't lie when it counts. I won't be tamed by a stranger like him. Once he sees my true form, he'll be done. I don't know, I've seen into Reagan's heart and it's light. <gasps> See? He can't come any closer. Wholesome mob is getting chipped away. With fear. Yet he's still struggling to get up and move towards you, risking his own life. Let that be a hint. I had no idea. None whatsoever. Master. Oh, he's like, oh, oh God. Oh, he's like, really? I'm sorry. Grab him. Do something. That was horrifying. It was a horrifying image. I thought we had more time. Do we have a special attack for this? <laughs> I don't think Salt's gonna cut it. Please, Mom. Powerless Reagan, the only hope. Whoa! Mom. Whoa, the, the opening song for season one. So Holy crap. A top secret workout routine. <laughs> All right, one punch man. Oh my God, oh my God, I'm so pumped for this. This is so epic already. <laughs> Get him, Reagan. <laughs> He's shoeless, no less. <laughs> Probably just scared out of his mind. <laughs> this is the most epic running towards someone montage. Grab him, give him a, a hug. Oh, don't do this to me. Ah, <laughs> oh, man, what a journey with the two of them. Shoulder pat, shoulder pat to seal it. Remember our sweet, sweet takoyaki days. It's okay. All hope has not been lost. Come on. It won't take that long. Got him. Ankle pat. No, 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 no. Fake out. I believe in Reagan. I know for almost a fact Reagan would sacrifice his life to save Mob if it came down to it. There's something I probably should have told you a long time ago. Oh my god, imagine grabbing Mob's hand like that. In this Is state. he really this powerful? Yes. Just not in the way he's claiming. <laughs> Yo, seems like you're doing well. Been a while, hasn't it, Shigeo? What? What? <gasps> no! Dimple's alive? Oh. Thank God. So what is he lending Reagan his powers? Maybe just saving his life. I mean, Dimple's been there, right? Dimple's been there and back. Turns out they're, they're not so different after all. You must have been harboring a strong desire to see me again. Strong enough to prevent me from being totally destroyed. And then I was drawn into this power spiral, which is how I was able to come back. Hey, partner. <laughs> Can't get rid of this guy. <laughs> Thanks for saving me and everything, but could you give us a minute? <laughs> Poor Dimple. Nice assist. It was an epic shocker assist. I have no power! No spirit. No, you don't power. say. <laughs> Whoa! I have no powers of any kind! And I never yeah, surprised the mob who like put so much faith in him just out of sheer love. It was all a lie. Right from the start. <laughs> Stupid allergies. Sorry, can Terrible day for allergies. <laughs> you listened so earnestly since then. From that day forward, Mom, all I've ever done is use you. That's not all he's done, but I understand why he would feel that way. And that's who I really am. <sighs> Sorry I had the nerve to call myself your master. But he, you know, he was though. Every one of us has another side. Even me! But you know, I have my lying nature to thank for bringing you into my life. Right. And by that same token, didn't your powers help make you who you are today? Here's the integration. You're fine. Just as you are. I know this is something you'll be able to handle easily. Because you're mob. Awesome. I mean, I think this goes back to the Avatar days. I don't really believe in good or bad traits. I think it's about the implementation. Even the worst of things, the worst of emotions, can be put to work in good ways. It's hard to even articulate why this is the case. Watching Reagan, I mean, Reagan is obviously a scam artist, but I know I'm not alone in thinking that he also is just great and beautiful. And why is that? Of course, underneath it, in matters that count, he has a heart of gold. But I think even his negative traits, there, there's a way in which they're kind of admirable. You know, even the scammy side, it's not admirable when people are being wronged or when there's damage, but there's some kind of like connection of those traits to like fun and creativity, ingenuity, 
ingenuity, confidence, intelligence. And we've seen him use those powers in ways that are really impressive in some of his greater moments. Like when he scammed his way into the, the compound to save Mob from the cult. I can imagine Mob's dark side being used to give him a little more of a backbone. In fact, I think we've seen that in the show. There have been a lot of fights where he gets pummeled because he refuses to fight, but then, you know, something wakes up in him and he takes a clear stand. You know, we see he has that confident side that he lacks in his normal civilian life. This is a really embarrassing story, but to give an example from my personal life, I had a physical altercation with somebody because he was kind of harassing my girlfriend. And it was kind of a horrifying experience for me because, well, for one, I thought I was incapable that I'd moved past that, which in hindsight is a huge mistake of its own. But what was more horrifying was initially the feeling of like raw adrenaline and power that it, it gave me. I won the fight and on a certain level, initially, it was like a great feeling because it was like some kind of crazy subconscious lizard brain stuff, you know, like fighting to protect my girlfriend. When I had time to kind of settle down, I was just hit with this overwhelming feeling of guilt. And it took me a little while to come to terms with that. But I think a couple takeaways for me were now I know that that's still possible for me. And hopefully knowing that will steer me clear of those situations in the future. But another part of that, and this might be very controversial, but it's just the way I feel, is in some way, while I regret that it happened, there is some value in the knowledge that I am capable of that. You know, that I'm capable of defending people if push comes to shove. Or more importantly, the fact that I'm willing to, that I have the ability to make the decision to take a risk in defense of other people. You know, because when you imagine yourself doing that, of course you say, I will, but you don't know what will happen until the actual situation emerges. So now I know, okay, that's that's within my, my realm of capability. I can put that in my pocket and just try to have more mastery of it, understand myself better. To know that there's power in my dark side is in some small way a positive, as long as I can master it and keep it in control and use it for the right reasons. You've decided you'll deign to accept me? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm asking you to accept me the same way everyone else has. Mob's the last one. But isn't that how it goes? What if she turns you down? She probably will. And I. But it's not about her. We'll get through it. Come. I love that they're using the epic monster battling music for the we'll get through the rejection speech. Cause yeah, that is epic. That's the last boss. Subomi is the has been the challenge the whole time. Kagama Shigeo. 100 percent Hell yeah. Finally, it was inevitable, but it feels good to see. And I was more powerful than ever. You think Sabomi's really waiting for him? We don't need to know that. Only he does. The flower also got reduced to like a very simple sunflower. Hey, I'm glad Dip is alive. Already. I guess she left. No, no, she's there. She rejected him. He looks okay. Rejected. <laughs> what is this? Me she was still Perfect though to come back to the bros after a rejection. You need this. It never occurred to her to think of me that way. That's all right. I'm really glad it happened that way, actually. To be honest. Yeah, it's good as thing. This is a good thing. <laughs> I think it would defeat the point, defeat the purpose, if she was like, "Oh yeah, mob, I've always loved you, etc." I'm sorry, kiddo. But you know, Ray is a perfect person to be there at this moment. Sometimes. Hey, it's gonna be okay. Welcome to your life. <laughs> One of many. You have a lot of rejections to look forward to. <laughs> as well as, you know, actual love. Hey, Serizawa! Oh, yeah, totally fine. More importantly, uh, I could use your help with something. I think it's time for some takoyaki. Confession, the future, episode 12. Oh, thank God there's an epilogue. I was getting scared there for a second. Time to say goodbye. Sad. Sad. Will the UFO come back? You think? Next time they I need us. I know. Sex victim. It will. Yeah, he knows. <laughs> Body improvement. Fight on, fight on. He looks like he's running much better. There you go. This is character growth. With everyone's help, I made it this far. So please, look out for each other. Can you do that? Yes. And giving motivational speeches. And what about you, a vice captain? We have a lot of members, which is fun. Next week, we'll Ice be going Captain. to a training boot camp with Musashi and the others. Oh, the Body Improvement Club. Who would have thought? You interested? Uh, sorry, but I've got enough on my plate being the vice president. So I'll have to pass. You're a loss. <laughs> Taro, it's been a while. Hey. You heading over there too, Hanazawa? And his hair doesn't look terrible. Hey, we should go shopping again. You wanna? Yes, yeah, monkey shirt part two. Check out the new Hagemon line. Sure, let's do it. Great idea. Uh, uh, wait. Just like go with it. Shirt? Don't fight it. Don't fight it. Hey, bro. What 
I feel like I missed something. What? I swear I'm not going back to look at the upskirt. A strong wind blew the girl's skirts up and then he saw Honazawa's Marge Simpson look. I don't know what that was, but when I first saw the girls, I was expecting the three of them to immediately fall in love with these three studs <laughs> because I expect them to feel the way that I do. Yes, this is spirits and such. What can we do for you? Oh, Looks wow, like we like... Always gotten used to the yeah, job. yeah, we got the next yeah, iteration of The he's Office. Doing great. He's the very backbone right. of this agency. No problem. And he found a place in the it world. Does for me. I've been working here six months now. That's perfect fit for her. They talk on the phone sometimes. Now that's Oh, 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 that's... Okay, that's great. So they say friends. Hey, Suzuki. Hey. How have you been doing, man? Suzuki, formerly known as Gary. Time to hide, everyone. <laughs> now, Rick can still do his work. As like the you know the business end of things, management CEO. Still, they wanted an exorcism, so I threw a little salt. <laughs> still up to his old tricks. They still happen, people though. Why are the lights off? Hey, Tome, Sarizawa, are you two in here? Oh, is it a surprise party for him? It's so sweet. And this series started off with Reagan being kind of lonely. Say, your eyes are looking kind of red there. I don't remember allergies. Asking, you devil. It's allergies. How about a raise? <laughs> oh no! Psychic. We got psychics in the room. We're good. We're all, it's all good. Oh no. <laughs> it's memorable. Hey, what kind of birthday is I wish I could this? live in this world. <laughs> I wish I could <laughs> go to this surprise birthday party. Damn it. Listen up. You all better He's so happy. He's like the happiest I've seen him. It's free. I feel terribly sad that that ended. But I'll let it end with a shot of Mob's smiling face. When I heard season three would be the last, it was kind of hard for me to imagine how they were going to do everything that I wanted them to do in just 12 episodes. But having finished it despite the length, I can't really have asked for much more. This season just had so much to it. I mean, it almost felt like two seasons, you know, there was the first half with the whole dimple battle, which in a way was foreshadowing for Mob, you know, Mob went through a similar, similar thing at the end there. Mob being kind of the last to have his meltdown and also to be saved after saving so many people. And then of course this final arc, which has brought everything together and incorporated all the elements, completed what's been building for so long, as I've said many times. But I'll say it again because it's the finale. Shigeo Kagama is one of my favorite characters of all time in any media. I love him like a brother. Like, I just get such an urge to reach out and, like, yell at him. You know, you you can immediately see how great he is. The only person who can't is himself. But also on some level, you understand that it's a journey he has to go on to find it. And that journey feels so true to me. So real to human experience. Because what people tell you is right. You know, what we hear about us being special and unique is true. But where I think it goes wrong is that that's not it. That's not the end of the equation. And I think if we're being honest with ourselves about it, if we really reflect, or maybe it's just my experience, the knowledge of that, even if it's correct, is not enough to get any kind of spiritual salvation or any kind of personal fulfillment. Perhaps part of what's lost in the assessment is that a lot of human beauty, a lot of human value lies not in the state we're in, but in the potential we have as like just unbelievably powerful creative machines. And the process is tough to define, but I think it's something like looking at the truth of what we are, which includes in a very, you know, basic, maybe biological way, you know, we're flesh and blood creatures born into the earth with evolved impulses and instincts and needs, which will include a natural propensity and talent like Mob has, then finding this point that's also hard to define, where it becomes conscious, where you're more than just a combination of cells living out day to day with kind of an inherited purpose that's unquestioned or inherited values that are questioned. And I think once that line is reached, that's when you enter the state of of total free will and then it becomes a responsibility which is tough to take on as we've seen in detail in mob to take all those raw elements and reach something like a, a maximal state of of what one is given their natural base and also incorporating experiences part of what makes mob such a wise young man is he becomes awake at a certain minimal level very quickly very very early on in his life and so he's able to start thinking and of course that thought the thinking what am i you know where is my value what do i want to be balancing that with what he he wants just naturally you know, his attraction for Subomi is painful. It, that's the burden of his life, but that's also the adventure is figuring that out. That's to me, largely the story of life. And that's so, so beautifully articulated in this show with Mob as kind of the, the perfect vehicle for that. But through it all watching, you know, it's a matter of time. You know, he can become that. You know, he has it in him. And you also know that he's going to have to struggle a bit to find it. He's going to have to ignore easy answers. He's going to have to ignore false pride, false friends of identity and self-worth to really keep looking, to push past all the, the pitfalls, the traps in front of him. Seeking like this North Star, you know, this point that he can feel intuitively but can't exactly describe and that leads him into adventure it leads him to try new things join the body improvement club seek out friends take risks find reagan withstand the the antagonists he meets because he's connected to something greater which is described to be mob you know ultimate mob so this episode is his destiny and it's not over for him you know he's still a little kid but he completed this arc of his life this is that whole process in kind of a microcosm i think i've been saying since pretty early on that i think it would be a mistake 
for it to end with him getting with Subomi. So I'm super pleased with the way that went down. I will say from experience, speaking of false friends of identity and worth and pitfalls, I can very strongly associate with this, with the, the quest for Subomi. This is another story that is kind of embarrassing, but speaking of recent history and that girl, I was very heavily invested in that relationship to perhaps an unhealthy degree, like I kind of lost myself a little bit. Thinking about it a lot later in hindsight, what I realized was that when I met her, I was in a period of extreme growth. Like I was doing really well, but also I was pushing myself to the limit. And part of the issue I think arose perhaps from loneliness and isolation, but thinking about it some more, I think another element of it was that she was someone I was just super drawn to immediately. Like in all my life, I've never had that powerful of an attraction. So to start dating her, it kind of was an escape route, if that makes sense, because it gave me something to connect to, to feel alive, that gave me kind of a, an out or a way to halt my personal journey, because the personal journey was tough, you know? And it didn't always feel pleasurable, but dating someone who I was super attracted to and drawn to was just, just a raw shot of dopamine. And it felt good to slide into it. Further evidence of that fact is when that relationship ended, it's like I immediately got teleported back to a state where I had to figure things out again because it wasn't an answer. It was a distraction, which isn't to say that relationships are bad or anything for that matter. It's more a question of what role is it occupying and is it an escape? Is it a way to stop the journey, let yourself off the hook for, for developing? I think Subomi was that for, for Mob to a certain extent, because really his, his goal is to love himself and incorporate his whole being and understand and accept his whole being and also further himself and grow, learn new skills, push himself to the limit, accomplish things he wants to accomplish, give back to the world even, etc. But Subomi is someone for whom from an early age, he assigned a kind of value, a value higher than himself. And so to get her approval would kind of let himself off the hook for having to do the things that he knows he has to do. In that sense, as I said earlier, Tsubomi is sort of a reflection of him himself and his own desires for himself. Like Tsubomi's approval of him is really his desire for his approval of himself, which he can attain without Tsubomi. And in fact, once he achieves it, that is perhaps when he can actually have a, a healthy, good relationship with Tsubomi. And I think that's probably what Tsubomi is looking for. I don't think people really want to be used as a vehicle for one's value. I think people want to date people who have value. And so the rejection was just A plus material. The way Mob took it felt right to me, like the right lesson, right takeaway, and also felt believable given his insight that he had in the last episode. Mob can get that value from himself and it's not empty value. It's not just pretending that everything is great and he's perfect because that very thing is something he's rejected and ways he's helped other people change their, their motives. Now it's something that he will build but he knows he can build it. I think that's the where the confidence is key. That's part of the significance of Reagan's words, you know, like I know you can do it. It's always hard to do these last episodes because there's just an infinite number of things to say and a lot of that will come out later once I sit with the episode or sit with the series. So I will do a Q&A, but I think for now, as the last video, it's safe to say that Mob is a show that permanently holds a special place in my heart and it's not just the show, it's the, the people who felt like they're real to me, who have given me some of the most real moments as well as the most heroic ones. So for now, I'll say thank you guys for, for being part of this Mob journey. I remember watching the first episode and being hyped for it being different, but I what I didn't realize, what I didn't anticipate was it being this insightful and this powerful. So yeah, thank you again for following the series, for all the support, and I will see you soon for the Q&A.